Hey everybody, welcome back to AIT 1203 Mechanical Installation. I'm your instructor, Mike Deal, and today uh, we're going to keep moving through some more hand tools. We've talked about hammers, we've talked about wrenches, uh, we've talked about the proper care, we've talked about the maintenance of them, we've talked about the rock proper applications, we've talked about some improper applications. Well, the same thing occurs, uh, or applies, I should say, uh, when we're dealing with uh, pliers and screwdrivers, which is our next two topics. So we're going to go ahead and delve right into it, okay? First thing we're talking about is pliers. You can see I've got quite a family of pliers right here. you got some channel locks or slip joints. you got needle nose, uh, some diagonal cutters, line and pliers, a little bit of everything right here. Pliers are designed for a couple of different things depending on their type, okay? They're designed to grip, to hold, cut, and possibly bend, okay? but they are not designed to tighten or loosen fasteners, okay? All right, in this case right here, you got your slip joint pliers. You got a pair right here, okay? They're called slip joints because they will open and close just a little bit to accommodate bigger and smaller sizes of things that you're wanting to grip, okay? Uh, but they are not designed to tighten fasteners. Now, if you remember the lesson that we had on 6 to 12 point and open end wrenches and things like that, um, you want to get as much contact and surface area as you possibly can uh, around a faster. Well, this pair of pliers is not going to do the trick. Uh, I can show you a couple. Look, you can look and kind of see the daylight. I think you're going to be able to see the sort of the daylight between the fastener and the and the uh, pair of pliers there. It's just not designed to do that. Um, again, it's designed. The pliers are designed to hold things, to uh, use them to bend uh, certain metals and things like that. Um, but you know, make sure you don't do it. this. This right here will set you apart real quickly out on the, on the shop floor if someone sees you going for a pair of pliers to do something like that. Okay, be a professional. Use the right tool for the right job. Okay, that make those two match up. The right tool for the job, and this is not a wrench. Okay, so. Um, first thing we're going to talk about is the slip joint. I kind of showed you this. Um, it expands uh, a little bit for not very much, but it expands a little bit to where you can grip larger uh, or smaller things. You fully open, I mean, excuse me, fully closed. You can see right here that there is closed enough enough to where it can, uh, you know, you know, tighten up to where the two jaws come together. If we open it up a little, expand it a little bit it won't quite close all the way but you've got a greater uh, throat in which to put your, your grip items and things like that okay so that's why they're called slip joints uh, made by all kinds of companies um, this happens to be a pair of snap-ons uh, we've got your know, craftsman makes them uh, i'm not a huge fan of craftsman that's just me personally um, but uh, you know Ch uh, channel lock makes a good set of pliers um, but uh, anyway that's for general holding purposes and things like that, yeah, these slip joints are, are pretty good, okay? The next type we have are the tongue and groove, okay? A lot of people call these channel locks. Channel locks are actually a manufacturer's name, they're a proprietary name, um, but they're actually, uh, you know, they are so popular um, that they don't call them tongue and groove, they just refer to as channel locks, okay? Now, a pair of channel locks like this, they're slip joint, in, in essence, sort of like slip joints as well, okay? You open them up and you can expand the jaws to where it will grip something rather large, okay? And they come in all sizes. They come from small to large. You can pick up some huge things and hold some huge uh, pipes and items, things like that. But you can get a little variation to where what you're looking for is in this grip, you hold it this way, in this grip right here, you want to have it to where it is comfortable in your hand and you can get, get enough force. Obviously, if you're trying to grip something really big, uh, you know, you're going to need to be able to open up the jaws and still maintain this type of grip between the two handles like this, okay? Because it's, it's impossible to get a good grip on something that's this wide. So, I mean, you can, it's, it varies. You've got different, um, different positions that you can put these in for varying sizes, okay? Uh, big thing here, just keep these lubricated. Um, and, uh, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll last a long time. Again, quality is a big thing. Um, particularly with your handle, your grip device here, with your handle, um, whether they're going to stay together or not, how well they slide, things like that, your teeth and your grip, you know, it's all, you know, going back to the same thing that I've been preaching for the last couple of lectures is quality is everything in your tools. Um, nothing more frustrating than going and, and 
something that just can't hold up to the job or the task it's, it's supposed to be designed for, okay? But um, it, can, it can be moved around. Um, and one other thing, too, it's got to be properly oriented with the fastener. I'm going to try to get up here on this one, okay? The movable jaw, which is this one right here, it must be forced toward this pivot point right here. Sort of this pivot point, I'll just flip it over like this. Okay, so when I, for example, I'm going to use this as an example. Uh, it's a bad one, bad idea here, but if you get turned around like this, okay, I'm going to open it up just a little bit, okay. But if I were to have to, if I were have to have to turn this for some reason, or, or if I were gripping something else besides this, the uh, the movable jaw uh, must be being pushed to that pivot point, which is what I'm doing right here, okay. You'll be surprised at, for example, I'm going, this is loosening right here, okay? So all my force is around here on this forged end, like that, okay? You'll be surprised at the number of people that will put it on backwards right here. And then when you do so, what that's causing is, uh, it's causing all the force to be on this uh, side right here, and you're not going to, it's requiring on how much grip you've got, okay? So your wrist is actually doing the, the force rather than the tool itself. So it's got to be properly, properly oriented, uh, a lot like we talked about when we were talking about um, the adjustable wrench and the pipe wrench, okay? It's got to be oriented properly so that it pulls in the right direction, okay? Uh, the other type of pliers, a lot of people are familiar with these, are the vice grips, okay? They're a lot stronger than the standard pliers, okay? Um, there's an over-center mechanism in here, and you can kind of come apart here, and there's a, this is a rod right here, a knob that, will adjust in and out and adjust this cam right here and the action on that and put it back together like that and there's an over center action uh, once it grips, grips hold of whatever it is you're, you're holding uh, it'll go over center and hold it and again I'm using a bolt which I have preached against uh, doing okay but this is for demonstration purposes but again you can also see uh, a lot of daylight under that bolt head, okay? Not good contact surface area, okay? So we're gonna adjust it out just a little bit so if we're not put a just enough squeeze on it, and you have to adjust it every now and then, you know, make it right for you. Over center, okay? And that's the beauty of this thing right here. Um, it will hold, you know, I, I don't have to hold it anymore. I just let it go like that. And I can squeeze this release trigger right here, this release the handle, it'll go back over center and release whatever it is I'm holding. This is great for um, welding. Uh, if you do have a rounded fastener, if you've got, if, for example, if you used a crescent wrench and it's slipped and you've got everything around, um, it's good to try to sacrifice, you know, you wind up sacrificing, but as a last ditch effort, and it's a good idea, uh, maybe good tool to use uh, to get that rounded fastener off of there, okay? Uh, it's also real good for holding a workpiece, particularly if you've got something that's hot, some hot metal. If you're cutting something with a torch, um, you might want to, like for example, you might cut a piece of angle iron, okay? It's still very hot, you don't want to grip it with your hand, or even, even if you're wearing gloves, grab it with a pair of uh, vice grips, and you know, you can hold on to it uh, a lot easier once it's, once it's gripped and over center, a lot easier than you can with just a regular pair of pliers. You don't have to continually um, apply that grip to it. Okay, so those are vice grips. Um, the other type of pliers we're going to talk about that you'll use a lot of is the diagonal cuts, okay? These are right here. Now, this is a pair of Craftsman. I don't care much for these, all right? And one of the reasons is this right here. Um, it is uh, it's, it's very smooth action right here, contact, but it should be smooth throughout. I'm having to kind of force these together. And if I'm cutting on something, you know, um, I, I, I don't need it to bind up and hang up on me. Um, so again, good quality tools make all the difference in the world. But these diagonal cutters are for cutting things like soft metals like copper, okay? Inside of a, um, inside of a piece of a conductor, nothing but copper, stranded copper. Uh, you cut solid copper too, but re relatively soft, okay? Um, and other soft metals as well. They are not designed to cut hardware, okay? You don't want to shorten a bolt but you will have to do occasionally. You do not want to do that with a pair of diagonal cutters, okay? These are also known as wire cutters, okay? So don't use them to cut, um, to cut uh, hardware or things like that. Uh, I can always tell when, when somebody has used these improperly, the best way, uh, uh, like if they've used them to cut a pair of, um, or a, a bolt or something like that, 
All you got to do is just kind of hold up, hold up the light, and you should see maybe a, you should see a straight slit. There's just a little bit of light that'll come between these two cutters right there. If they've been cutting bolts with these things, you'll see a nice little round hole in there, and invariably they, that looks just that's, they start going downhill from there. But uh, you know. Uh, I always need to make sure that you properly lubricate these and you know just take care of them. I've seen more left out in the rain and then they're just locked up and freeze up. You can't use them at all. So anyway, those are the diagonal cutters. Um, the uh, needle nose, okay, come in a couple different uh, variations, okay. This is another set. This is a, this is not a real good quality set. I just happen to find these laying around. Uh, but someone has taken the uh, opportunity and lubricated these and they actually do pretty good, okay. Uh, but needle nose are used primarily to use uh, for electrical work. Uh, a lot of times we will hold, uh, particularly in panel building, uh, we will hold uh, a conductor into its place while we tighten the lug down on the uh, on the actual uh, screw. This part of the lug to tighten it down. But this is great for holding things in place while we do it. Its narrow nose right there gets into tight place places, so it holds things really, really well. Um, some of them do have cutters on them, some don't, okay? Um, this, cut, this pair right here, got a set of cutters, uh, like the one they're showing on the screen, uh, but it's good for cutting wire. Uh, and also ends of cotter pins, we can bend them. Uh, if you've ever had to uh, uh, you know, perhaps uh, set a bearing or something like that on a wheel bearing, uh, particularly on older vehicles, uh, you tighten the nut and you line up the cotter pin and stick it in there, and you, of course you take these, and you can twist them. You can also actually, if you wanted to, on a cotter pin, you could use the cutters as well to, to bend them out of the way and cut them because cotter pins are soft metal. All right, so it's acceptable to use those, but cotter pins, I mean, the needle nose are really good. These are especially good for pulling them out as well, getting them to straighten up and pull them out. Um, but again, now I've seen this in this lab, and this, this, it's like to kill my soul. Um, I have seen students try to put on hex nuts with pair of, I don't even know hold it right, a pair of needle nose. Now I'm going to see if I can get this right here. If you can, I don't know if you can see it or not, but looking at the daylight between the flat of the fastener uh, and the uh, grip of the needle nose, you can see that is not, not a good idea. But I have actually seen students come in here, which is why we put this class together the way we did, talking so extensively about hand tools, is because it's not like they're not available. We've got, we've got a shop full of them. Um, and it's either they were too lazy to go pick up the right tool or they didn't know that that was not acceptable, okay, or that's just a bad idea. So anyway, it's not for uh, fastener tightening, tightening or loosening, okay? All right, now we're gonna quickly move through, uh, uh, we've moved through the, uh, the pliers. Let's talk about screwdrivers real quick and we'll call it good on this. Um, there's a couple different kinds that we're gonna talk about. We're talking about the flat uh, blade or the slotted. We're, talk, um, we're going to talk about the Phillips, and we're going to talk about the Torx as well, okay? You kind of see a host right there, and of course these are made by a gazillion different manufacturers. I'm going to stress it again, buy a quality screwdriver. The tips are what we'll wear. The tips on, on a cheap, um, foreign-made, third country, th third world country, uh, they are not going to last, okay? I've seen them snap, I've seen them break, I've seen them just twist and get gnarled up right out of the package. Just not worth it. Um, you need to go and get you a quality set, okay? So we're going to first talk about a couple things that, are, that you need to consider. Uh, first of all, we need to talk about tool to fastener engagement. How well, you got to get the right tool in the right fastener. There's a couple different sizes of Phillips. There's different sizes of flat blade. You got to make sure that you get the right uh, screwdriver for the fastener that you're working with, okay? Pay attention closely to the tip design. We're going to talk about that. We're talking about the shank length of, as well, uh, and grip, and whether it's insulated or non-insulated, okay? With, if you're working in electrical panels, it's always good to have insulated just uh, shanks, just in case you accidentally bump into something, a hot uh, conductor or something like that. Uh, sometimes you have to work in hot panels, so you know it's a good idea to have a set of insulated uh, shanks there. But anyway, moving forward, let's talk about the parts of screwdriver, okay? This is your tip right out here on the end and your blade. The tip right here, particularly on Phillips and um, particularly on flat blades. Uh, just absolutely critical. Um, they're especially heat treated on the very end. 
uh, to, to withstand a lot of the, tor the, the twisting and torsion motion that you're going to have when you're putting in screwdrivers, or screws, flat blade screws, excuse me. And so uh, you've got your tip, you've got your blade. This is the blade section right here, the, the narrow section. It's not that you can see here, this is the tip. Uh, and in this particular screwdriver, it's got it's a little differentiation in color. Okay, and this has got a coating on the outside here. But this is your tip, and this is your shank, uh, I mean your blade right here. This is your shank, as you can see. All right, this is your shank, and this is your grip or your handle. Now, grips and handles come, uh, they, they come in a lot of different uh, ways. I like a soft grip handle. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's easier to grip. It's usually a little bit bigger, uh, the soft grip is. And um, it, just, it just works better all the way around. Um, but you don't have to have that uh, to be a good tool. You don't have to be a good tool. Uh, Klein, I'm gonna tell you, Klein makes some really good uh, uh, screwdrivers. Um, something you might wanna think about when you go to buy something on your own. A blue point with Snap-on, Mac, things like that. They're good quality tools. Uh, I really like the grip and the cushion uh, that Klein has, okay? But anyway, this is that's sort of the anatomy of a screwdriver, okay? Uh, the flat blade here, the tip of the, of the flat blade, a lot of people don't know this, don't re they don't realize that the damage that they're doing to a fastener or the screwdriver itself, you've got to make sure that the tip fits the slot properly, okay? And there is a there are different size screwdrivers for different size slots, okay? So they should be, uh, the engagement there between the tool and the hardware is critical, okay? For example, here's one that's too narrow. Okay, you're trying to drive one too narrow. You don't have that good uh, contact area. A couple things, you lose torque for one. Okay, you're not going to get the torque uh, that you're supposed to have when you when you're only partially filling up that slot with a narrow screwdriver. So, don't just grab a screwdriver because it's got a flat blade and start screwing, uh, you know, uh, tightening something down or, or loosening. Okay, get one that's properly uh, matched for it. Um, also. You can uh, you'll twist that blade, uh, the tip. Excuse me. You'll twist the tip right off uh, if it's too narrow. Okay. If you can get one that's too wide, uh, the biggest problem with one that's too wide it could be two things. Number one, it won't seat properly all the way down into the slot. The other thing is, uh, particularly if it's, if it's countersunk, uh, it, you know, there's material right up here on the sides of the screw, and you can't get full engagement. If it's a flat surface, if it's a if it's a round head uh, with a slot in it. You're going to, if it's too big, you're going to mar the finish on whatever it is around on it. So just use the proper one, okay? This is a good, good uh, tool to fastener uh, contact right there, engagement. So uh, make sure you got the proper fit when you are uh, using the screwdriver on the flat blade, okay? Um, and also, uh, I see a lot of this too. Um, you don't want to have to buy screwdrivers all the time or anything, but if you damage a tip, um, yeah, you can grind it, but if you watch, you'll start to grind that thing, it'll turn blue. You're changing the temper of the metal uh, in there and, and how durable it is. You're going to wind up with uh, just chipping and breaking it all the time. Um, if that's the case, you know, if, you, if you've done that, my suggestion to you is buy another one. Just go ahead and buy another one that's, just, that's properly heat treated on the end. And also, if you go to grinding it away, um, if you can see right here, if we grind here, it's going to naturally make it wider and wider, so you may wind up with a too wide of a of a engagement, you know, from for for the screw. So my recommendation to you is don't play around with them. Okay, um, they they uh, you just just buy a new one. Okay. Uh, also, one thing here too. Um, this is a screwdriver. This is not a punch. It's not a chisel. Okay. A uh, couple of things. Tips aren't designed for that type of abuse, okay? Um, if you're trying to shear something off, that, no, it's not. Also, these handles are not designed. If you remember when we did our punch, uh, we talked about punches in, in our hammer lesson, we showed how we mush, how you mushroom those uh, punches by striking them. Well, those are steel. You can imagine what it's going to do to a plastic handle uh, if, if you shear it or just damage it. and. So remember, it's not a chisel and it's not a punch, okay? Um, occasionally, you'll use it uh, to, to kind of wedge things a little bit. Uh, that's okay, but uh, just be mindful of how much pressure and force you're putting on that thing, okay? Um, there's different blade sizes for the different sizes of screws that you put in. Screw sizes is a number from, from uh, you know, all the way from zero to 24, and you have a corresponding blade width that you want to use depending on the screw size that you're using. So there is an official chart out there. 
So you can get on the internet, or I, I, I'll probably post this uh, on Blackboard. So uh, look for it there, but you know, you'll have it to reference. Okay, we're going to talk about the Phillips screwdriver next. Okay, this is one that gets a lot of people in trouble. Okay, you'd have different sizes of Phillips uh, screws or screwdrivers. Okay, and notice the curvature right here. This is the reason I'm pointing this out. Notice the curvature. I'm going to show you some other ones that look like Phillips that aren't, and that's where you get into trouble. Um, you don't get proper engagement on that, and you wind up losing torque. You wind up stripping the head of this screw out to the point where nothing will get it out. Okay, so uh, it comes. Phillips come in one, two, and three sizes. Um, the tip should fit the slot, like it says. Uh, you lose torque if it's too narrow. Uh, if it's too big, it's not going to engage down in there, and it's just going to basically uh, trim off the, the edges right here as you try to get it out. So uh, you know, be mindful of that. Um, here's another one, uh, just another picture here. Um, now here's something that you get a lot of confusion on. This is a different type of head. This looks like a Phillips. This is JIS uh, fastener head uh, screwdriver. Um, there's some differences here. It's kind of hard to see, to see, but on this drawing over here, it shows it better. Number one, let's look at the angle of the tip right here on this JIS, not the angle of the Phillips. So I can already tell you that if I've got a screw that's designed to fit the Phillips curvature, I can already tell you I've lost some contact engagement. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see that very well uh, by using that. It looks real similar, okay, it's pointed, it's got four blades on it, but it is not a Phillips. So you wanna make sure that you have a true Phillips uh, screwdriver um, going into uh, a, tr a Phillips screw, okay? It's easy, there's a couple others out there that look very similar. Also notice too, too that on the Phillips screwdriver, we start to flare out a little bit, we start getting a little fatter, as we start getting a little bit uh, more contact area right there, all right? But notice that this blade here stays straight, okay? So if you try to put this JIS in a Phillips screw, you're going to get some wobble, some wobble. You're going to get a little play in there. That's not good um, fastener to uh, tool engagement. It's not. So you, you want something that's, that's going to fit there. Really easy way to do it is to make sure that this right. Just take your screw, stick your screwdriver in there, and make sure that you don't have a lot of slop in there. It should engage that screw uh, very easily, okay? So... Um, the last one I want to talk to you about is the Torx bit. Now, this is a this has been a good improvement. Um, I forgot exactly when these came out, but um, these give you really good torque value. I mean, you can really torque down on these things. Um, you you have good uh, tool to fastener engagement, and also re really reduces the uh, amount of slippage that you get uh, that you typically get through through a uh, Phillips or a flat blade, okay? So, um, and, and you'll notice it's got a little bit of a star pattern. Now, this is not a star bit, okay? This is a Torx bit. This is a completely different bit. But it's got its uh, shape here. Um, I think it got, uh, there we go. Uh, but what it says, this, this bit is shaped like this and it gives you good engagement on that. Um, it comes with different sizes. They're, they're called T, uh, T1, T2, T3, T4, going up to like, I think T40, uh, but anyway, the big, the higher the number of the T, the bigger the bit, okay, and the way it's sized is, um, this is uh, basically point to point uh, diameter, okay, we're talking point to point on this bit right here, this point to this point, okay, the distance between those, and in inches on the T1, it would be 0 .031, and very, very small, okay, uh, but it goes on all, all the way on up, and it gives you uh, your torque values as well. This chart's available, and I'll get to you on uh, Blackboard as well. But anyway, those are the types of uh, pliers and screwdrivers that you typically will use in their proper application. If anything else, you know, make sure that you understand some of the, uh, you know, uh, improper uh, applications. We don't, you got to use the right tool for the job. I can continue to stress that over and over. But anyway, that should, that's going, we're going to wrap this up here with our hand tools. That concludes that. Um, if you got any questions, come see me. For now, appreciate you watching, and uh, we'll see you in the lab. Thanks a lot.